You're in the trenches with Dave Lapham, presented by First Star Logistics. Reminder, you still have a few more games to take part in the giant giveaway from First Star Logistics. Each week the Bengals play, take your opportunity to participate and win some of these great prizes that have been given away that fans are truly engaging in and loving. Dave Lapham was on the call. The Bengals, 27-24 winners in overtime. Three wins in a row for the Bengals. The second one in overtime. Lap, man, that you had to enjoy calling this football game. Yeah, it was, it was just a crazy, uh, crazy football game. A lot of fun, a lot of excitement. As the, uh, the late, great Jim Valvano said, don't give up, don't ever give up. And that's what this football team's all about. There's no question about it. I mean, the second half of this football game, it was absolutely incredible. Uh, Jake Browning, 19 for 24, 199 yards in the second half. Two touchdowns and interception, quarterback rating of 111.6. I mean, they only had, uh, one, from a possession standpoint, it, it was it was crazy. The, uh, the Bengals were uh, the ball control that the Bengals, the Vikings had against the Cincinnati Bengals in the first half was amazing. And uh, in the uh, in the second half, the Bengals only had a, in the third quarter, the Bengals had one possession. Four plays, 15 yards, ended up in the interception. That's the only possession they had in the, in the uh, third quarter of the football game. But then the fourth quarter, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. They scored 21 points against this, this defensive football team of Brian Flores, who, I mean, just doesn't give up points like that. I mean, they, they just, they, uh, they, they shut an opponent out last week. Uh, they held the opponent to 12 points the week before. They just don't give up points like that. It was just an amazing comeback by the Cincinnati Bengals. And, and the only uh, negative, obviously, Dave, is a big one. The, uh, the injury gods were not kind. There's no doubt uh, the Bengals lost D.J. Reader for the season, it looks like. And they lost the other D.J., D.J. Ivy, potentially for the, for the season as well. So those are two big blows in the first half of that football game. Yeah, and let's stay on that injury front because the other one was late in this game, Jamar Chase, shoulder injury. Went to the locker room, came back out, and uh, basically looked like he had, I want to say it was uh, his right uh, shoulder in a sling underneath the hoodie, coat, whatever he was wearing. Uh, and you, that never looks good when you see that either. Yeah, I think uh, they want to get – it's an AC joint issue, obviously. Uh, they want to get ice on it and all that. So it's just a, a matter of uh, – you know, how, how bad is the strain? First degree, second degree, third degree. I mean, so um, I, I think I, I don't think Jamar is done for the season necessarily like the other two are, but don't know the extent of the of the damage to uh, to Jamar Chase's shoulder at this point in time. Just speculation. Very beginning of this football game, everything was looking great for the Bengals, the first drive. And then they try some trickery. And over the course of the past three games, trickery just never really – has worked for the Bengals and it didn't work this time. Had to settle for the field goal, and then, as you said, the next, the first drive by the Vikings was the DJ Reader injury, uh, being carted off the field, uh, and they go down and and you know they they take a seven three lead, and you know you sit there and you you, you go okay eh, this you know it's still early, but it just it seemed like that from that point on until we got to that fourth quarter the third quarter, fourth quarter, it was kind of a boring football game if you were a Bengals fan. I'll tell you what, the defense in the red zone kept the Bengals in the game. They had two stops for no points allowed again. You know, two interceptions in the red zone. Just just unbelievable. They've now got 12 possessions. In 14 football games, they have 12 possessions in the red zone where they didn't just hold them to a field goal. I mean, we're talking no points, whether it's by – turnover whether it's by fourth down stop and that's the other thing in this football game not only did the Bengals win the turnover battle but fourth down I mean coming into the game the Minnesota Vikings were converting at 68 percent on fourth down that was like second best in the National Football League over 68 percent they had one fourth down opportunity today and the Bengals stuffed them I mean that was a huge play obviously uh in, on third down in third and fourth down those two short yardage plays the defensive line just took over I mean uh, B.J. Hill had some uh, disruption and penetration that uh, that was a factor. Zach Carter, uh, same thing on, on, on that. And they were five for five on the season on fourth and one. Well, they're not five for five anymore. They're five for six. And that 
set up an opportunity for Tyler Boyd to make the huge play uh, on a on a scramble drill when Jake Browning has to get out of pocket, create and extend. And Tyler Boyd works his way all the way from outside the, the numbers on the left side of the football field across the entire football field uh, to outside the numbers on the right side. And on the run, Jake Browning makes an unbelievably accurate throw between a couple of defenders and, and uh, Tyler Boyd makes the catch and the rest is history. Yeah, unbelievable play there. But I, I want to go back to D, you. You talked about B.J. Hill, second interception. When's the last time you've seen a defensive tackle make two interceptions in, in uh, the the way he, and especially the way they were? I mean, they were unique interceptions. They weren't like just a clean, clear cut, fantastic plays by B.J. Hill. Yeah, I mean, he's his reaction to the football is incredible. You know, he's a very aware football player. And, and awareness is a, is a big, big deal. And I, I said, uh, BJ, I mean, it's like, are you kidding me? There are defensive backs in the league that don't have inter- any interceptions this, this season. You've got two in two weeks. <laughs> I mean, he said, I, I told you I was an athlete. I'm like, well, I wonder if Lou's going to play at linebacker a little bit. He goes, I'll do it. I can do it. So, I mean, he, he does have good hands. He is an athletic guy. And uh, his reaction to the ball, his awareness to react to the football, and, and be able to make the plays that he made were just massive. There's there's no question about it. Big, big, big game changers. Yeah, Mike Hilton also with the interception. Uh, the, the player that really kind of is stepping forward, and you can see the development right in front of us, is rookie Miles Murphy, the first-round pick out of Clemson. He's starting to find his way as we wind the season down. He is. He's getting more and more confidence. Um, You know, I think uh, he's not a rookie anymore because they played 14 games. You know, he's he's got a full season under his belt now. I mean, that's more than they play in a college football season. I guess not him because at Clemson, they're always playing for national championships. So they play a ton of football games. But uh, he's 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 getting an idea of what it takes to play at this next level. You have to have a, a plan. You can't just go out there and beat guys on your athletic ability. He was a better, you know, athlete than just about everybody he's played against in the high school and collegiate level. Now everybody at this level is, uh, is, is equal to his athletic ability or in some cases are equal to it. So, you know, you have to have a have an idea and a plan of how to attack people, and he's getting that done. He's having a pretty good uh, week of preparation every week in terms of working against uh, the Bengals' offensive line. Uh, the coaches are getting more and more confident in his teammates are getting more and more confident in him. His snap counts increasing. He's going to be uh, a big, big factor down the stretch. There's no question. Dave, I do have to ask you about Jermaine Pratt made a big play, but Trey Hendrickson gets called for being offsides. Um, after look, seeing, I mean, you know, uh, replays and views can always be different. I uh, saw a view that it looked like while Trey may have been early on his start, he did not cross the line of scrimmage. Uh, looks like maybe a bad call from the officials that nullified uh, Pratt's tremendous play that would have been probably the game-winning touchdown. Yeah, that that was unfortunate. I, I saw the early movement, and I assume – I mean, when I saw it, I was like, oh And then they threw the flag, and I knew that's what it was. I knew they were calling for Trey uh, for being in the neutral zone in their estimation. But Trey lines up off the ball. He doesn't crowd the line of scrimmage uh, all that much, so – a lot of times his first move is not, uh, in, you know, offside or in the neutral zone. So uh, that, that, that was unfortunate. Um, but the, I think once the officials saw the movement, the early movement, and that was my, it caught my eye up in the booth from, you know, that far away as well. It's like, Oh boy, I hope he didn't jump too soon. And uh, the official felt like he did. And, and, you know, the whole time <laughs> the play was going on, I'm like, it's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> And uh, and it did. It came back, and that that was a uh, that was definitely a blow. There's no question about it. Yeah, and Trey did come back with a big sack uh, in the closing seconds of the game, and uh, against the Vikings. He always makes amends. He always makes amends. Man makes restitution. It brings me to T. Higgins. T. Higgins has fought injury all season long, but man, when he makes plays, that touchdown, the the way he just the. To sit there and kind of go through it in your mind, how his mind has to be processing to make a great catch and then have the the willing, I guess not just willingness, but the the um, the where for all to, to know that, hey, all I have to do is 
grip this ball, put it out. I'm going to cross the pylon. That that is one of the greatest touchdowns I've ever seen. It, it was incredible. I mean, like you said, the the uh, the wherewithal, the football uh, instincts. That, that's millisecond stuff. I mean, that stuff you have to make those kind of decisions in literally milliseconds. And and for him to realize, okay, I'm still in bounds. I'm not at the uh, at the at the goal line yet. I haven't crossed the pylon of the goal line. I'm just going to kind of like reverse windmill, <laughs> half a windmill with the football, um, you know, and, and make sure I cross the pylon on the goal line. I mean, just just an incredible um, decision to make. You know, I mean, it's uh, again, it's football awareness. These guys are aware of what needs to be done, how it needs to be done. Uh, in the first half, they were a tick off. I mean, T dropped a pass early in the football game. In the very, no, I think it was the first throw of the game. Uh, T, T had an opportunity and and dropped it. And then he had one um, that, he, as he was going to the ground, could not quite control it. But that was a heck of a play. And uh, contested catch against a much smaller player, and he out leveraged them. And and just uh, it looked like a man amongst boys making that play. But as he goes to the ground, you know, the the ground helped him secure the football in the officials' estimation. And that was reversed. So when he had a chance to to uh, to make plays in the second half, he made them all. So they were just kind of a tick off in the first half. And then in the second half, everything clicked, and uh, in a way they went. And to make plays like they made against this Brian Flores defense, because he lined guys up everywhere. He did exactly what you know they anticipated that he was going to do and, and make it very, very difficult, disguising, you know, lining, lining guys up in, in uh, odd spots and bringing pressure and then dropping it. I mean, he did he did everything and in, in everything and anything to try to win the football game. And, and like I said, they, they weren't they, they were they were only giving up 15 points a game coming into this football game. And the Bengals hang 24 on them in regulation and 27 on them in overtime. You know, a player who Jake Browning. I was listening to the press conference. First off, Zach, Zach Taylor said this game took everyone, and it did. It took everybody that was active today to make this a victory for the Bengals to continue their 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 hunt to be in the playoffs. But Joe Mixon, the touchdown he scored where Ivan Pace Jr., everyone talked about, you know, the former UC Bearcat, Miami Red Hawk, and and for good reason. This kid can play football. We talked about him when we was in the studio this week. He's just a a football player you want to have on your team. But to see Ivan Pace Jr. coming full speed, Joe Mixon and him and Pace just meeting, and Joe Mixon shows why he's valuable – in that situation because he kept his balance despite getting really blown up and goes in for that score. That, that was huge. Oh, it was massive. I mean, you get a linebacker that's, uh, that's coming downhill untouched. I mean, he's unblocked. He wasn't touched. And, and Joe's, you know, trying to make a read, you know, with the football and, and, uh, in pace, uh, smacks him and Joe keeps his balance and uh, second effort and lurches forward, surges forward. Uh, you know, that, that was a huge play. And, uh, I, I, you know, <clears throat> those are the kind of things that motivate and inspire your teammates. And, and uh, there's, there's no doubt that that's what, that's what Joe, Mixon's, uh, Joe Mixon's all about. I mean, um, fourth down efficiency, the Bengals go one for one on fourth down. That was Joe's touchdown run. And uh, the, the 0 for one that the Minnesota Vikings went on, that was the, the biggest play of the game for them, basically, uh, in overtime. So uh, a team that was – dominant on fourth down coming into the football game, the Minnesota Vikings, uh, the Bengals outplayed them offensively and defensively on fourth down and ended up being a big factor in them winning the football game. You're in the trenches with Dave Lappin, presented by First Star Logistics. Uh, again, a reminder, you still have chances to take part in the giant giveaway First Star Logistics has been doing all season when the Bengals play. Great prizes. Trust me, Dave Lappin and myself, we've been – We've looked at these prizes every time we go into the studio at First Star Logistics going, hey, we would like that at our house. And uh, so make sure, <laughs> really? make sure you take part in the last remaining few weeks here. We've got three more. Dave, it's hard to believe. I think we were just talking training camp. Three, three games left. Coming up next. Three games left. Steelers. Yeah, three games left. Two on the road and one at home. Oh, hard to believe. But a, a, another Saturday game, December 23rd, 4.30, slated kickoff in Pittsburgh against the Steelers, who are playing the Colts as they're recording this post-game of the Bengals' big win over the Vikings. And then 
a road trip to the Kansas City Chiefs. And then, you, again, the final against – do we have to really say their uh, – yeah, we got to say their name. The Cleveland Browns will finish out the season at home in Paycor. These, these are going to be tough, tough wins, especially as we talked about earlier in this recording – about losing DJ Reader and you know who knows what the status of Jamar Chase is going to be by the, the time we get to these games, but uh, not an easy road to hoe. But I mean, at the same time, the Bengals are still in the hunt. Yeah, I mean the the thing one of the I thought I think reasons the Bengals are still in the hunt is because other than Joe Burrow, uh, they have been very healthy, and today it got blown up a little bit in terms of losing key uh, key players. But how about Browning? 29 for 42 today for 324 yards, two touchdowns, an interception, quarterback rating 97.7. 29 completions to 12 different receivers. He spreads the wealth. He gets everybody involved. I mean, th- th- this kid is is special. I mean, he sees the entire field. Um, I guess he was – I heard a little bit of his, his pressure, and he was talking about Brian Callahan when they first met in the beginning of the week. And they were, you know, talking about the defense that Brian Flores is, uh, was going to be putting out there. And, and he said, you know, you're going to throw for 500 yards, Jake. You're going to throw for 500 this week. Well, not quite that, but he, uh, he lit him up. I mean, like, like Zach Taylor said after last week's game, you lit up the world. Jake Browning continues to light up the world. As a starter, the three games that he started, Jake Browning is undefeated. I mean, and, and he's putting up historic numbers. It is crazy what this kid is getting done, um, and very humble about it. Um, very appreciative, obviously. But boy, it's it's uh, he, he's he's tough-minded. He's physically tough. He's got uh, physical skills. I mean, he, he's the real deal. He is. He has basically uh, taken his career path and turned it in a much different direction. <laughs> you talk about taking full advantage of an opportunity. My goodness. It's been a while since I've seen a kid uh, do this kind of thing. Yeah, a reminder to everyone, if you missed in the trenches this past week, you missed. We, we had two of the greatest to ever do it in Bengal stripes. Ken Anderson and Boomer Esiason both spending time with Lap in the trenches talking about it. And it was funny because our conversation when I was in the studio with Ken Anderson uh, and, and Kenny said that Jake Browning probably needed to, you know, have a cold one in that hand where he had the thumb uh, and, and Jake after this game was saying, Hey, uh, I could use a beer after this one. But right. um, so it was kind of, it was kind of interesting that, uh, Hey, he needs to listen to Ken Anderson because Kenny told him that's what he needed to do. But uh, well, Kenny, Kenny said he might be the best quarterback they've ever had. And he was kidding. Of course. But, I mean, Jake, Jake continues to throw up, uh, throw up crazy, crazy numbers. And I've had fans come up to me and say, all right, what, what do they, what do they do? If uh, Jake Browning uh, wins the Super Bowl, what what do they do? They can't get rid of Jake Browning. I said, what do you want him to do, trade Joe Burrow? They're like, well, I said, nah, come on, man. I mean, I, I can't even talk to you about this stuff. you got to be crazy. Yeah, just <laughs> but that, that's, that's the way fans are. <laughs> yeah, just that. Where's, where's Nick Foles right now? So, yeah, right. So. But, you know. But, but look what happened in New England with Drew Bledsoe and Tom Brady. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's and that's that's what some of the fans are talking about. We may have a Tom Brady type situation. I'm like, okay, okay, you know, hit pump the brakes. Let's uh, let's chill out here a little bit. Um, it's crazy. And, and, and as both Bo- as Boomer said, the NFL wants their star quarterbacks on the field. They don't want them injured. And at the same time, it's brought some great stories. And Jake Browning is proving to be one of those great stories of this season after the injuries for the job they're doing. And, and, you know, we just, it's, let's keep it rolling three more games and let's get into the playoffs and Hey, what happens happens. You never know. Cause you have to play each week. Like it's, it's it. So, but I mean, as you said, Dave, I mean, Jake Browning, big game, 29, 42, 324 yards, two touchdowns, the, the one interception, uh, the, Joe Mixon's contributions, people could say, oh, he only had 47 yards. And Jake Browning, even his press conference, said, hey, a lot of kudos to Joe Mixon because because of what was going on in the game, we were not able to do what we really wanted to do in, in having featured Joe Mixon in this football game. And uh, the, the, other, the other person I, I had to ask you about was, I think I saw Alex Kappa coming off the field, uh, Bengals' right guard at one point during yeah, the game. Um, he's good. He's good. He came back and... And, uh, and finished the game, and 
I just saw him uh, walk into the locker room as we speak here with his wife and his child and he's carrying his child walking out of the locker room. So looks like he's going to be good to go. Um, so that, that one, that one turned out not to be as severe. Probably he went into the blue tent, maybe, maybe got himself a good uh, reinforcement tape job and went back out there on the field. All right, Dave, let's, uh, let's wrap this up. It's been, a, it's, 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 it seems odd to say it's Saturday, but it's Saturday. And, um, Another short week, change, change of weeks. You get used to playing on Sundays and, and so forth. And uh, I know we're having big plans on In the Trenches. We have, hope to have some great guests coming up in the, in the week there at the First Star Logistics Studio. But uh, your, your thoughts as we, we – this one, we put, we put the bed, let the, the team go and enjoy this win uh, where, where our, our attention goes to watching games to see how things play out in the AFC the, over the weekend and – Getting ready for the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road in uh, whatever they're calling that stadium now. <laughs> right. Um, all I can say is, like you like you talked about, Brian Flores. Uh, one of the big reasons that he's doing what he's doing defensively is he has to cover up weaknesses, stopping the run. They're having problems stopping the run. That's why he went to this scheme as much as anything. And then you know the volume of things you have to prepare for is, you know, another another plus, another reason uh, to incorporate the scheme that he's uh, he's incorporating. So it, it was tough for the Bengals to run the football. It's been tough for other people to run the football against the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, he has just flip-flopped that defense. Last year, the Minnesota Vikings were a sieve. People were killing them from the football and killing their defense overall. I mean, Kirk Cousins was carrying that football team, and they did win shootouts. Well, Flores came in, and now the defense is what, what is winning them football games. I mean, they, they're winning, you know, uh, they're, they lost 12 to 10. They won three to nothing in their last two football games. So that tells you the kind of football that they're playing. Um, with that said, Jake Browning, even though, you know, they couldn't run the football against that defense, now all of a sudden, here they come, pressure, here they come. No, they're dropping a bunch. And, and him having to recognize that and work through the disguises and everything, he completes 29 passes to 12 different guys. Ten of those receivers have at least two catches. The leading receiver has just five catches. I mean, he's targeting Hudson five times, five catches. Chase four times, four catches. Brown three times, three catches. Mixon three times, three catches. I mean, he's just on on the money with people. And uh, it, it's, just, it's just a thing of beauty to watch him try to, find weaknesses, you know, in defenses and take advantage of weaknesses in defenses, no matter how well they're playing. And he's playing at such a high level doing it. So um, I'm, I'm just unbelievably impressed with the run that this kid is on and it, it, the way the way his football team has responded to him, the confidence his football team has in him and the way he's handling success. Uh, it's just it's just a, a heck of a feel good story. And uh, he deserves it. The coaching staff deserves it. I thought that Brian Callahan put together an unbelievable game plan. Um, and, uh, you know, Zach Taylor gave him credit for that. Dan Pitcher has done an unbelievable job getting Jake Browning ready every single week, you know, to execute the way he is. It's every, the, the, the boat is uh, everybody's raising the boat. It's, it's not just Jake will be the first one to tell you, hey, it's not just me. There's a lot of people that are, are going around. Uh, you know, in, in making contributions to get me ready to have success. But he's the one that has to go out and execute it. So he gets the big credit. But there's a lot of people involved in, in, uh, in, in him being able to do that. And he understands that better than anybody. It's, it's an interesting dynamic to watch right now. And that's what team sports are all about. And that's why, you know, it's the NFL and other team sports are so popular. Yeah, and I feel bad because – a play that's probably won't even be remembered much by fans when we look back at this football game. Bengals' ninth drive, and I have it highlighted on my, my notes. <clears throat> Third and three, Browning hits Yoshi, who it fights and gets the first down, leaving yep. 50 yep. seconds left on the clock. And before we know got it, out of bounds. got out of – I mean, that that play, and, and then, you know, because that gave him the first down – the next, the ne the next uh, play was the pass that gets tipped, and then we have the Higgins touchdown, leaving 39 seconds, I think it was, on the clock. And, um, boy, just the, that's, that's when we sit there and you, you look at a game overall, it could be one play can change an outcome of a game or 
how the direction of a game goes. And um, did not want to forget mentioning that uh, great little play on a third and three by Yoshi. And, and that's the thing. You got, you got a guy who's one of the best players in the National Football League, Jamar Chase, that is, is injured. So Trent Irwin goes in, takes care of business during the course of the, his action and snaps. Yossi goes in there and does the same thing. That's the kind of thing that, uh, that is so gratifying to the coaches. You know, the players stepping up, next man up. It's, it's trite, it's old, but it's true. I mean, football team is only as good as its depth uh, because you're going to have injury. There's no doubt. I mean, how, how about a football team that is, is down Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase in the overtime and goes out and beats a team that is still in the playoff hunt? Now, granted, they don't have their quarterback either, Kirk Cousins. They have their backup quarterback as well, but they're not as beaten up as the Cincinnati Bengals were during the course of this football game. I mean, they lost their best run stuffer. I mean, DJ Reader is not not just on the field of play, a dynamic uh, player, and and but in the locker room, uh, he's the leader. I mean, this guy, the tangibles and the intangibles that DJ Reader brings to this organization are amazing, and that's why so many guys felt it. I mean, it, it, it's hard to compartmentalize that and say, you know, you got to forget about that, you got to move on. We're not going to have DJ not only for the rest of this game, but probably for the rest of the season. And that reality hits you. And, man, sometimes, you know, it takes a couple of steps to get over it. That's for sure. Dale, before we let you go, let me ask you this. Will 10 wins get this team in the playoffs, or do you think they need to have 11? Or even will, or will even 11 get them in? Yeah, I mean, I think 11 should. I think 10 might. But the problem is, Dave, this is the only team in the National Football League with a winning record that hasn't won a division game. Yeah. There are five teams that haven't won a division game, but the others, you know, like the Carolinas of the world, uh, the Arizonas of the world, I mean, they don't have winning records. The Bengals have a seven. Now they have an eight and six record, and they're 0 and 4 in their division. I mean, now they've, they're 5 and 0 against the NFC, and we've kidded about this. If you can make, let, 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 let them just join the NFC West for one season. They'd be undefeated. They've been five and zero in the conference, and uh, in the way you go, um, so that that's that's obviously the fly in the ointment is being zero and four in the division, um, and it's uh, it's too bad. I mean, when you think back on it, um, the Houston game was so winnable. It, it, you know, there's 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 so many things you can you can think about, uh, you know, during the course of the season. But the the fact is, they're still alive. They still control their own destiny. And I would think you have to win at least 10. He's Dave Lapham. You have been in the trenches presented by First Star Logistics. Again, a final reminder, First Star Logistics all season long, every week the Bengals have played, has given away some great prizes. Make sure, three more games left in this season. Be sure to take part. Go to First Star Log on X slash Twitter to learn how you get involved in these great giveaways that First Star Logistics has been doing all during this football season. Also, be sure to check out the First Star Media Group YouTube page, along with Dave Lapham in the trenches on YouTube, as we have also Joe Goodberry and Malik Wright, State of the Jungle, on the First Star Media Group YouTube channel page. For Dave Lapham, this has been Dave Burke. See Dave Lapham this week in the trenches. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.